But Amalek decides they're going to come to Rephidim. This is where Israel is at. This is where Amalek's from, the people are from. The, they come to Israel at Rephidim. Now they came to them and fought with them. This means that they ambushed them. They attacked them. There had to be some type of premeditation involved here. Amalek came against Israel. They came to Rephidim for the sole purpose to fight them. But I find it interesting that Amalek never had a problem with Israel before. When Israel was a slave to Egypt, when they were slaves, Amalek was okay with them. The Amalekites were fine. That's all right. Not a big deal. Why do you suppose that was? Why do you suppose they never had a problem with them until now? Now that God has set them free. Now that they're free, now that they have found favor in God's eyes, all of a sudden, Amalek wants to come against them. They got a problem with Israel. Can I tell you something? The devil does not care about you as long as you're living in the world in the ways of the world. Yeah. He's okay with you doing whatever you want to do as long as you're doing it the way of the world. Hey, if you're drinking and you're smoking and you're doing drugs and you're partying, no big deal. The devil don't really care about you. You're alright because you're a slave right now. You're a slave to the world. You're a slave to fulfilling the sins and the lusts of your flesh. He doesn't care that you're addicted to pornography. He doesn't care that you're experiencing in sexual impurity. He doesn't care that you are seeing and doing things that only married couples should do. He's okay with that. He's all right. Go ahead. In fact, he'll probably encourage the behavior. The devil isn't really interested in coming against you when you're doing things of the world. But let me tell you something. The second that you turn your life over to Christ, Amen. guess what? Yeah. The devil's getting a little nervous now. The second you go ahead and get baptized in Jesus' name and for remission of your sins, guess what? The devil's going to start getting a little uncomfortable. He's going to start getting a little mad. The second you start living your life for Christ and start telling people, telling your friends and telling your family and telling people at school about Jesus and his saving power, he's going to get a little upset. The second you live for God is the moment that the devil gets mad at you. Oh yeah, he's interested in killing you now. He wants to find you and devour you. He wants to devour you like a lion, says the Bible. He's waiting to attack you. He's going to come to refeed him. He's going to come to where you're at and find you and attack you. I tell you what, devil, you should have done killed us when you had the chance when we were living in the world. Amen. But now it's too late. It's too late, young people, because those of you who are living for Christ, yeah. those of you who have been baptized, those of you who have accepted the Lord in your heart and repented for your sins, Oh, you got the power of Christ in you. You got the power of Christ in you. And it's got the devil scared. He's shaking in his boots. He's all nervous. And he's going to come against you and attack you and say, hey, what are you doing? I'm going to stop you. You can't do this. I'm big. I'm bad. And I'm going to put you down. But guess what? You can't listen to him because he doesn't know. He doesn't know about the victory that you have. He doesn't know about the victory that you have in God. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says, but thanks be to God that gives us victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. Have you thanked God lately for your victory? Have you thanked God lately for your victory? Thank God for the victory that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. See, the devil, he, he didn't kill us because, see, he might be sly and he might be cunning. But he ain't all knowing like our God. He's not all knowing like our God. Because if he knew... If he knew that you were going to find your way into a church one day, if he knew that you were going to accept God one day, and that the power of Christ was going to live in you, I think he would have took you out a long time ago. So, hey, I'm sorry, devil, but you done messed up. You done messed up because we are children of God. And we're living for Christ and we are conquerors. We are victorious. Thanks to God for the victory in Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Give the hand clap for our victory. You have victory. You have victory, Andrew. You have victory? Yes. That's right. Did you hear that, devil? <laughs> My boy's got victory. Now, here's what we got to do. Act like you just failed the test. And you're feeling, and you're bummed out, man. You're bummed out. All right? Does this look like a man of victory? <laughs> Does this look, what kind of victory? What kind of testimony is Andrew given walking around bummed out like he lost, hanging his head low? Do we do this as Christians? Walking around with our head hung low, <clears throat> walking around with lack of confidence, walking around like we, we have lost and we have no victory. I'm telling you, as Christians, we got to start lifting our head up high. We got to start walking with our back straight and walking in the confidence of God that we might have a testimony to people. So when they saw us, 
Like, look at this man. Look at this man of God. Yes. He's got something. He's confident. He just went through all these battles. He went through all these attacks. He just lost people in his family. He's just, oh, man. And look at Andrew. Mm-hmm. Andrew's got the victory. Andrew's got the victory. Now, here's the first thing. Moses didn't say, okay, let's sit here and whine and cry about being attacked. Right? That's not what Moses did. Moses said, go get some guys and fight. We're being attacked by the devil, but that's okay. We're attacking back. We're attacking back. Are you getting that? I'm saying don't sit there and get attacked and just deal with it. I'm saying get up, go and attack back. This is what this is. This is your weapon, people. This is your weapon. This is your sword. We ought to pray for one another. Right? When your brother and you see or your sister is dealing with something, there's a, the devil's coming against them and attacking them. Should you be there praying for them? Shouldn't you be there praying for them? You see one of your uh, youth members come down here at the altar. And they're getting touched by God. They're crying. They're, they're feeling God. Shouldn't you lay hands on that person and, 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 and pray them through their situation? This needs to be a place where we come to be loved. This is a place where we can come to be fortified. To strengthen up as a unit. And pray for one another. Moses prayed for Joshua during the battle. We ought to pray for each other for our battles. God didn't expect us to do this alone. That's why in James it says to confess your sins to one another and pray for one another because there's power and there's effectiveness in prayer. How many people believe that today? Yeah. Power and effectiveness in prayer. We don't just pray just to say, hey God, can you do this or that just for the fun of it. It's because it does something. Yeah. There's power and effectiveness in prayer. So Moses goes up to the top of the hill and he starts holding his hand like this. Are your arms getting tired? They're starting to get tired. They're starting to get tired. Now Moses and Andrew here were not meant to, to do this alone. He had two men. The same God that brought down the walls of Jericho and brought them victory. The same God that took 300 men in Gideon and took on over 100,000 men. I said this is the same God today that can deliver you from your enemy from your situation and your problem. Yes. This church, victory's been happening in our youth. I don't know if you guys have been watching or seeing it, but I'm getting crazy pumped about it. We had Sean baptized not too long ago. We got Amanda who just got baptized last week. Rania just got baptized the week before. Three baptisms in our youth. That's victory, young people. They're coming against the devil and the devil's getting mad. He's getting scared. He's shaking in his boots. Last Sunday, my brother Scott and Cody. Who saw them worshiping? Who saw them coming out of their seat? They go crazy up front, screaming and shouting, jumping around and bouncing. The devil ain't got a hold of them. That's victory, young people. That's victory. Hannah and Samantha, last Sunday. Oh, I don't know what they were doing. I don't know what they were doing. We were just sitting in our seats, having a worship. And they decided, no, this ain't good enough for me. I'm stepping out of my seat. I'm coming up to the front. Ain't nobody up front. This ain't what we're supposed to be doing. And open their arms up to God. And say, God, here I am. Here 